Welcome to the next lesson. In this lesson, we're going to steer away from our scripts and the console, and we're going to go towards an R Markdown file. And I'm going to show you how to create your first actual project. So I, I'm starting off where we left in the last video with all of this up. I'm going to go to File, New File, I'm sorry, New Project. And it's going to ask me if I want to save the current. I personally do not. You can. I'm just going to not save it. Now, when new project shows up, you have a bunch of different options. We want to probably put that into a new directory. And so we can keep it all collected in one little folder or set of folders. And it's going to ask you again, what type of project do you want? We will get into some of these as we progress through this tutorial, but for now, we're going to go to new project right here. So it's a blank slate. We're going to give it a name. I'm going to call this R project one. That way um, we can follow along if we had to have to come back to it. Now you'll notice also that there's a open and new session. If that's checked, it'll keep my current environment and all of this open and open up a whole nother instance of R Studio, and you can actually run multiple projects side by side, it's not a problem. But to keep everything organized in this tutorial, let's go ahead and not check that box. And we're gonna go ahead and hit Create Project. It's switched into a project view. Now you'll see we have our console window again. It looks slightly bigger before, because remember I changed the view to have a bigger font for me. My environment's still to the top right, and my files, plots, packages, all that is still at the bottom right. Again, we have a console. We can do basic things like 2 plus 2. We can even make assignments in there. X is assigned to 23, and you'll see in the global environment, X is equal to 23. I'll show you a quick way to reset all of these. You click this little broom here, and it'll clear all your objects from your environment. Click yes. Now, if I hit X here, it's going to evaluate and say object X not found. Okay, let's not worry about that because what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file in our project. New file, and this time instead of an R script, let's go with R markdown. Now, it's going to ask us for a title for this. We'll just say whatever you want. First markdown file. You can add in author anything else. Now the output format, uh, for now, let's just keep it as HTML. PDF and Word should work no problem, but that's going to assume that you do have Word and also that everything is kind of working. As you can see, um, PDF requires something called MCTEC on Windows and MacTex. It depends how you pronounce it. So let's stick with HTML just so that we're all on the same page. PDF might work out of the box. We'll see. If not, then we'll actually mitigate that probably in another tutorial. Let's start with HTML. Hit OK. And what we have here is we have our console at the bottom. Still, I'm going to resize this so that we can see more of my actual R markdown. Now, this is a, I believe, an RMD file. Yes, R markdown. So it's .rmd when you save this. Right now, it's not saved. We still have our basic environment. We have our bottom right. Let's start at the top here of what they generated for us when we created this markdown file. These three dashes and these three dashes is going to encapsulate our metadata for what this document is. Basically on the HTML file, the name of that file is going to be under the title. So you can call this whatever you want. Mark's cool markdown file and that'll be the title on your html document and you can see the output is html document that came with the fact that we selected those during the project settings do not mess with lines one through four except for what's in the quotes for now so let's keep that there and you're going to see lines six through eight has um, a weird knitter options chunk things like that don't worry about what all this stuff means yet uh, let me walk you through this file um, so lines six through eight are actually the only place in this document that is actually code. The rest is basically markdown language and metadata. Metadata is going to be one through four and the markdown language is what you see here, like these two dashes means, hey, create a second level heading, which you might be, you might understand from like Microsoft Word. And I'll show you how that works in a moment. 
and you have regular text, you have some links, and that's about it. Oh, I'm sorry, if you scroll down, we have more code. And we know this is our code because it's got the letter R inside of this curly brace, and it's got these back ticks. More on that in just a moment. And so we have another header called including plots. You can also embed plots, for example, and then you have more code. And the code is gonna do certain things. Now, let's scroll up, let's get straight to the point. The point is, you can read this stuff and you can hit this little play button and it'll actually play. And you see that little green thing that popped, popped up there? Let's hit it again. And it actually ran everything within these back ticks. And the back tick is not a apostrophe. It's actually to the left of the number one. Very important to know because they look the same, especially if you're cutting and pasting from the web to RStudio. You're going to be confused. So back tick, and there has to be three, and versus single quote. Not single quote, you want back ticks. And they must have an open inside of back ticks and then a close inside of back ticks. So, so line six and eight are necessary. If I get rid of these last, any of the back ticks, you notice how it changed the color? So there it is. So you can tell that it's code because it changes the highlight color. Okay, we ran that. We have a bunch of text. We're gonna run the next set of chunks and that's gonna be a summary. And as you can see, it populated right here within our document. And including plots, we can actually run a plot. There it is, there's a plot. Pretty cool because we have, we have actual words that isn't code mixed with our code. Now, how do we put this into a very awesome HTML file, we knit it. See this little knit button right here? Let's click on knit to HTML. Then it's gonna say you need to save your file. Let's save it as first markdown file. And it's going to automatically put it in our R project file. For now, that's gonna be fantastic. Let's just do that, hit save. And you'll see on the right, well, first, it pops up right here actually as a, this is our studio rendering the HTML file saying, hey, this is what it will look like um, when it's HTML. So it's pretty cool. It doesn't have those little hash, hash marks. It's got Mark's cool markdown file. That's the title that we put into the metadata. We have our markdown. That was our header, our second level header. We have our text, we have links that work. We've got an actual um, code in gray and here's the output of the code. Output of the code right here. Pretty awesome, and that's your first R Markdown file. Now, if you actually want to look in the bottom right-hand side, you have more, more files within that directory. And it's a little weird to navigate, but you can see my home, home is right here, then my R project is right here. So in your R project, you should see all of your project files. What we generated when we, when we knitted this was the HTML file you see here, first mdfile.html. If I click on that, you can open in editor or you can view in a web browser. It truly is an HTML file, so if I open it in editor, it's not going to look pretty. It's got the actual HTML in there, and if you look at this, it's mind-bogglingly complicated looking. So close that out. Let's click back on this and do view in web browser. By the way, this is just a regular Chrome browser, but you will notice on the URL, it's actually on my hard drive, but you can take this particular file, you can drop it into your Word, whatever website that you own, and it'll render just like this, as is. So that's one way you can publish it. You can publish it on GitHub, you can pub publish it on your own WordPress sites. There's definitely ways to do all of that. In fact, once you get really good at R, you will be able to create a program that'll automatically push your R code into a WordPress site, and I have a link for that too. Okay, that's it for your second lesson. That's an R Markdown file. More to come. I hope this video was useful, and if it was, leave a comment below, let me know how, and also subscribe. That'll help me grow my channel and continue creating videos like this.